Are you going to drink that? No, you can have it. <clears throat> Cheers. Hey, 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 it's Grips, and as always, thanks for joining me yet again. There you go. All right, so if you do follow me on Facebook, I posted this one during the week, and it showed you uh, a very simple cloning technique that I did. And as you can see, uh, it, there is no visible line that separates the clip. It genuinely looks like there are two people sitting uh, in this frame or in this picture, yet obviously it's just me twice, right? And also, what I, quite often what I see is most clonings, I always see side by side, never one over the top of the other, right? Never like this. So, so how is this all done? Well, glad you asked. Stick around and I will show you exactly what I did. All right, so first off, I had to create a clip, which I need in my footage. Now, obviously, make one continuous shot and do all the acting in one frame. Otherwise, if you... Take two shots, lighting will change and other things will move and it just doesn't look right. So the first thing I had to do was just do the whole, let me just fit this project size. So I did the acting on this side and then I moved to this side. So during that shot, you can see that I moved that bottle across and then I left it there. So let's just multi-trim this clip so I can get exactly what I want. So let's just move that. All right. Um, I'm just, this is, I'm just putting my audio on. I don't use the audio from the microphone, obviously. Although, and that's the clap, so, so I can sync it later. If you ever wonder why people do that, it's just so they can sync it later. All right, so my end point, or my end point, sorry. And then I've moved the bottle across. And then just before I get up, I'll, uh, that'll do. Uh, out point, and then I'm going to move across the other side and then find the footage for this side. There you go. And then I'm going to drink it. Yeah, all good. And then out point. All right, so that's all the... Uh, that's actually the hard part done, believe it or not. <laughs> now it goes relatively fast. All right, so let's move this onto the uh, overlay track. And then let's just trim this the exact length of the, the, the main track, right? All right, so realistically, what you're going to see is so simple, it's ludicrous. I'm going to go for the FX filter, Boris Graffiti, drop it onto my overlay track, and then go into Customs Filter. So you'll notice that I'm using version 8, but if you got Boris in version 5, 6, or 7, it doesn't matter. It can all be done, right? So it doesn't matter what version you have. It's just that I'm using version 8. That's the only difference. All right, so I've deleted the text track because we don't need that. What I'm going to do, I'm going to create a mat or a garbage mat or a spline media whatever you want to call it that's what i'm going to do and what i have to do is obviously i have to cover this bottle as well so very simple i'm just going to go right across like that and i've created my mat now if you go if you stay on spline object you go to the fill tab you can change the color here so obviously i change for i change for a really nice green screen look so i can chroma key that out so it's going to come up really clean so there you go mask and chroma key and then I'm going to apply it. And I'm going to use my uh, thumbnail or my, uh, what is it? Eyedropper, sorry. Thumbnail, Jesus. And then I'm going to click on that. And then, bam, voila, look at that. It's perfect, right? Now, you'll probably see, I'll, I'll zoom in on this so you can actually see it. Uh, oh, it disappeared again. <laughs> right. Well, I was trying to show you something. Let me, uh, you might be able to see it this way. You'll notice here there's a very faint green line of the mask. Now, the reason why that is, I'm viewing this in the standard definition. If I click anywhere on my timeline here, I'll get my uh, my HD button come up, right? All right, there you go. That's, and now if I click on the HD, it disappears. This is the original source clip. This is what you will see when you render it out. If you go into standard definition, you're going to get a draft version. So you're going to see a lot more grain. The quality is not as good. So all the imperfections are going to show as well. So if you want to see the final result, click HD, high, high definition. And there you go. You can see uh, how easy that was. So here I am going to move this bottle from this side to this side, like so. Now, when I grab for it on this side, you'll see that my hand disappears. 
because of the mass. So what I need to do, I need to animate the mask that as my hand is moving towards the bottle, the mask is revealing the bottle. So let's go back into, that was my phone charger telling me that my phone is charged. <laughs> so what we need to do is basically animate the, uh, the mask. So first what you want to do is you want to right click on the fir very first keyframe. You're going to copy that. You're going to move along the timeline and just before you see the hand, let me zoom in on that just before you see the hand come and move towards the bottle. All right, so I can already see that my fingers is gonna be cut off, so just before that, I'm gonna go Control V, because that will then copy or paste that keyframe that I just copied. And then I'm gonna move it ever so slightly, probably use the keyframe on here, maybe another one, no, that should do it. And you'll see this little icon here, this is basically, it says Add Keyframe. Now, once I've done that, if you stay on the spline object track, move your mouse over to the preview window, it turns into a pen tool. Anywhere, doesn't matter, just click once, you'll see a red line appear, hover over to the red line, it'll turn yellow, click again, and all your nodes will come up. So now I'm gonna move, I'm just gonna scroll over that, I'm gonna move so I can reveal that bottle. I don't have to do it a lot, I just need to do it ever so slightly. Yeah, that'll do, less is best. So now if I move across, you'll see that I can grab that bottle very easy. So there you go. And I'm going to press apply. And then I'm going to go and have a preview of that. So here we go. Move it across. And bam, voila. Let me mute that because it's all the static from the, uh, the two clips in the, in the background. It's always annoying, isn't it? So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how very, very, very simple it is. And it, and it just, it looks just perfect, doesn't it? It's just, I'm quite impressed with that. <laughs> Give myself a pat on the back. But there you go. Like I said, it is so simple to do. You, you just got to make sure that the clip that you're doing is continuous. Add the Boris filter, create the mask, chroma key that mask out. Now, if you are using version 8 and you do see ever so slightly that there is a slight color change. You've got to remember with version 8, you also have the option um, of going into the edit modes. Where am I? Sorry about that. A attribute, mask, and chroma key. I have the invert and the gamma here, so I can still tweak it ever so slightly in case I do see, because what these do, they blend the two layers together. Now, I didn't have to do that because the original clip I created was done in version seven, and I'm now using version eight for the tutorial. What I did after everything was done, I uh, rendered it out, then I did my color correction because I didn't want to do the color corrections on two separate clips, I'd rather do it on one clip. There you go, my friends. I'm probably rambling, but that's how easy it is to do the advanced cloning effect. And as always, thanks for watching.